Hey, 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 I am Kalman Magyar Öcsi, speaking to you today from Toronto, Canada. Episodes of Tansas Talk, which combine a mix of music and stories delivered by me, are available, as always, on tanshaz.com, that's T-A-N-C-H-A-Z.com, or on YouTube, just search Tansas Talk and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Now, today we have an episode of Tansas Talk Interviews. This is where I delve into long-form interviews with a wide array of guests. And episodes of these Tansas Talk interviews are available on all popular podcast platforms, including Apple, Google, Spotify, podcast stores. You choose the one you love the best. Make sure you subscribe, though, and leave a nice review if you like what you hear. Now, today, I'm excited to have on the program one of the legends of Hungarian folk dance and also folk dance education. Peter Levoy, who is calling in from Miskolc, Hungary. Peter is a, a master instructor at the Hungarian Dance Academy. He's in charge, basically, of teaching the teachers, helping guide and develop how Hungarian folk dance teachers will be teaching future generations. So there's a lot of trust in him, and he does an amazing job. Um, here's how he got there, some bio on, my friend, Peter. Peter was born in the year 1960 in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, he didn't really dance much as a kid instead, and as a teenager, he uh, entered the Hungarian State Ballet Academy, the folk dance department there, where he attended from 1975 to 1979. He was an outstanding dancer, and he quickly joined, uh, at a quite a young age there, the Hungarian State Folk Ensemble. And he was with the Hungarian State Folk Ensemble, or the Alami, uh, Népi uh from 1979 to 1988, quite a tenure there. Um, and from there, he joined the, the amazing Kodai Chamber Dance Group uh, together with uh, Zhuravsky, uh, Zoltan, and, and, and uh, Farkas Zoltan, Botyu, and many others. Uh, this group... Um, stormed the world and changed everything in terms of uh, putting village dance on stage. And he was with that group from 1988 to 1992. And then uh, that group uh, kind of uh, transitioned, I guess. Uh, many dancers joined the Budapest Dance Ensemble. Uh, that's uh, pre Honved, as it was called. And now it's got another name. But anyway, he danced there from 1992 to 1993. Now, you know what? If his, uh, if, if his career stopped there, I'd say enough because he was such a legendary and outstanding folk dancer and one of my favorites when I was a boy. He was quite influential on me uh, as I was watching him dance. But luckily, he went on with his career. After leaving um, uh, the State Folk Ensemble, he started attending the Hungarian Dance Academy, uh, known then as Magyar Tanzmüviset Főiskola, uh, studying folk dance pedagogy. He went on to study uh, pedagogy at the University of Debrecen, at, uh, and he studied educational science at the Doctoral School of Education at Utvish Loran University's Faculty of Education and Psychology. That's ELTE, by the way, E-L-T-E. And ultimately, in 2012, he received a master's degree from the Hungarian Dance Academy. He's now the head of the master's program for folk dance teachers studying um, at the Hungarian Dance Academy in Hungarian, that's now known as the Magyar Tanz Művészeti Egyetem, which is in Budapest. Peter, has, he's got more articles and books published than I can list here, but just to give you a glimpse of his areas of research and what he teaches, his, his expertise, they include cognitive movement, uh, digital research, talent development, body movement, theory of choreography, group teaching, contemporary trends in folk dance teaching, and much more. So if you get the chance to study at, uh, at the Hungarian Dance Academy, these are some of the things you might learn from, uh, from Peter as he's in charge of that department. Um, and again, he's got a lot of uh, awards for his dancing and his choreographies and his, uh, and his research work and his teaching. Uh, but two of them, uh, two of the top ones I've selected and in introducing him was the Magyar Arany Erdem Kerest, which is the Hungarian Gold Cross of Merit. And just last year, uh, he received from the United Nations organization UNESCO 
the Hungarian National Committee Award. Um, and that is for a, a teaching method he developed called Ich Kel Yarni. Um, and we'll talk us a bit more about that and what, what that was about. Uh, Peter is married to uh, Anita, a wonderful folk dancer in her own right, who is one of the leaders of the Sinva Völgyi Neptanz Együttes in Miskolc. That's the Sinva Völgyi Dance Ensemble and uh, also the Sinva Völgyi Elementary Arts School. Now he's got four children, uh, Viola, who's 29, Levente, who's 25, and Viola and Levente, um, are uh, uh, children that Peter had with his former wife, um, Kish Zhuzhanda, who's a, who was uh, herself a fantastic dancer. dancer. Um, and then with an Anita, um, they have a child called Laura, who is 15, my son's age. Maybe we'll introduce the two of them at some point in the future. And, uh, and uh, Oliver, who's uh, Anita's uh, son from a previous marriage, he is 29. And Peter is in Mishkot, as I mentioned, and that is exactly where he is calling in from and uh, through the Zoom today. Peter, hello. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you for calling me. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm glad we've connected. Um, it's been a long time. I, you know, many years went by, we didn't see each other. And then um, and last year, two years ago, well, two years ago, three years ago, maybe at Pontozo in Toronto, we... Yeah, we that was three years ago, yeah. Yeah, three years ago now, we, we reconnected, you know. You were at a Pontozo, um, I think in the 90s, maybe, or or I know you've been teaching, uh, and I didn't mention that in your biography, Peter, but you spent many years coming over here to North America, teaching all kinds of groups. What, you know, do you remember your first trip here in terms of t uh, teaching? Yeah, that was very interesting because uh, the Hungarian National uh, uh, Folk Ensemble it was a, a long, uh, three months long uh, uh, tournament, uh, North America and Canada. I was in 1984, 1984 sorry, mm -hmm. 1984, and uh, from January to April. And uh, when we were in San Francisco uh, to Karpatok mm -hmm. uh, International Folk Dance Ensemble, and they just uh, went to uh, to look us, look, look our, our uh, on, on the stage. And after the performance, the leader came, came to me and uh, uh, I got a, a contract from him. And that was very interesting because he said, if I would like to dance with them, I can start the 1984 September. So I, I, when I went uh, back home, uh, I started to organize everything about this. But uh, after that, uh, a very interesting man, uh, uh, searching uh, uh, one, so searching for somebody uh, from Calgary, Canada, uh, who can teach the the Calgary <coughs> Vodroza dancers. That was a ten years old folk dance group in Calgary, and uh, he just uh, walked around the the professional folk dance ensemble at that summer, uh, early summer, and uh, when he saw the Hungarian folk dance ensemble. Uh, the National Folk Dance Ensemble. After he called to me, okay, Peter, I look, uh, I look a uh, lot of uh, good dancers at the past one month, but uh, I think you are the best. Mm -hmm. So I would like to invite to you to the Calgary dancers of that summer, from uh, the middle of Ju July till maybe the middle of September. So I I went to Calgary at that summer, mm -hmm. 1984, and. Uh, I uh, asked my mother, please send to me uh, to Canada all the the uh, letter, uh, la vie, uh, letters, 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 yeah, all, all the letters uh, uh, to follow me. And uh, I got the the letter from the Carpathian uh, folk dance ensemble. They still welcome to me, but the immigration office uh, didn't get to me. The Munkovallashi. Yeah, the work permit. Yeah. The, the work permit. So I, I can, so I, I can uh, go to San Francisco like a tourist, but I can't work. Mm. I can't work. Okay. So this is why I, I stand uh, in Calgary till December, oh. and I just went back to home uh, to Hungary. So the Karpatok. So the Karpatok. We're talking about the Karpatok in Los Angeles, right? Uh, 
I it's think not no. Nah, well, I mean, they're a Los Angeles group. Maybe they saw you in San Francisco, but oh, yeah. So but maybe, yeah. wow. So yeah. what interesting. Um, so so who was your contact for Calgary Vodroja? Uh, now. Well, back then, who was the person that they you know that, that hired you and brought you out? Uh, there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, uh, Mr. Tibor Rada. Uh -huh. uh, he was a, a soldier, or maybe the Ludovica student in 1944. And before the Russians came to Hungary, they just uh, left Hungary and uh, they took the, the Ludovica flag with him and uh, they just uh, gave it to back after the, the uh, 1990 or, or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So, you, so you, you pretty much spent six months in, in Calgary teaching or, uh, around yeah. and then and then what? You go back to the state ensemble, and they're like, "Welcome back, uh, Petty. Where you know where were you?" Or like, it's a kind of a uh, weird thing to kind of take a leave for those uh, that period of time. Yeah, that was funny because uh, I went to the, uh, the directory and I told my director, Mr. Shafiz Shandor, what what happened? What happened? So I got the contract. Please let me go out mm -hmm. and. Uh, and they don't want to. They don't don't want to hear anything about this because you know it's the middle of the the Cold War, yeah. 1984. I was the second time when Ronald Reagan uh, was elected to the mm -hmm. president of the United States. So we are exactly in the middle of the Cold War, and they didn't want to hear anything about this. So I have to drop my contract to the Hungarian National State Ensemble. Mm -hmm. And when I broke it, that one, I was a free man. So I just went to the to Calgary. And when I came back again to Hungary, I went again to the directory of the National Council. I'm home again. OK, OK, here's the, your contract. Please write, say, sign here. And tomorrow you can start. <laughs> I didn't understand what wow. happened. So, well, it was good for. That's the, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, that's I, funny. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I just told them, why don't you take me some T-shirts? I am a member of the Hungarian State Folk Ensemble, and I am here. I'm teaching, uh, so I, I'm. You know, I, I, I didn't understand. You know, different <laughs> thinking. Yes. Different uh, so uh, Peter Levo, caught in caught in the middle of a Cold War crisis. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's funny. So so. Um, I mean, I don't want to. I, I didn't know we we're gonna go down this line so uh, immediately. But in so in mid 1980s, what are you teaching uh, out in Calgary? Because you know, at that point, and we just the, the previous episode before this, you know, we talked. Uh, I was talking to Kadar Igi, and check out the episode. Uh, it's about the Western Canadian Hungarian Folk Festival. Um, uh, we celebrated the second and hopefully last virtual <laughs> festival. Um, but uh, but in the mid '80s, you know, they're still doing pancrikazo and they're doing all these old old type of choreography. So what are you what are you teaching uh, the Calgary Vodroja back then? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. When I saw first uh, the reper repertoire, that was incredible, just old style. Because Mr. Uh, Rota Tibor, uh, uh, he wasn't a dancer. Mm -hmm. He he was a Ludovica student, so. He just wants to do something uh, Hungarian, okay, do some Hungarian, what it means, let's do dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just try to collect some uh, uh, very horrible uh, quality copies of the Hungarian folk state ensemble from the beginning part, the uh, 1950s, 1960s. And they just try to uh, teach their uh, dancers or whatever. So. I was, the style was incredible. The dancers were unqualified, <laughs> and uh, but they were very good, very nice guys right. and girls. Right. <laughs> it was there was a very same age with me, yeah. so around 24, 25, or mm -hmm. maybe a little bit younger. So so we just very good discussing to each other, mm -hmm. and uh, just after a month, we were very good friends, and we did something. We did a lot of things together horse riding, skiing, bathing. So we were all the time, all together, mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, what I'm doing, I, I try to uh, teach them uh, from the very beginning, 
what it means to step, how can you jump, uh, what it means the music uh, beats, how can you understand the music, how can you put your movement possibilities on the, on the music, what it means the original traditional music, because they didn't hear that. Mm -hmm. They didn't uh, so any kind of traditional dancers. So I try to uh, show them what it means. How can they uh, imagine what it means to improvise a dance? So that was the first uh, three, four months. And after they just got a very big shock. And after they just changed their mind slowly. One of the things I was talking to Iggy about is how the West and I would clarify Calgary as the West for purposes of this discussion, but you know, the West, it, it always took a little longer for this, these trends and, and this stuff to get there um, versus, you know, on the East Coast, Toronto, particularly, you know, the Toronto Kodai Ensemble was always on the cutting edge. Um, that's particularly probably due to Dreisiger's influence there. My first interview on Tansas talk with him, we talked about this. Um, uh, but, uh, but, you know, do, do you think you're able to make inroads um, or enough progress in those six months? I would say probably not. But Peter, fast forward from 1984 up to 1996 or 95, it, maybe it was, in Calgary, you were asked to be uh, the prime, the dance director of that festival, the Western Canadian Hungarian Folk Festival. This is a, this is a huge deal because Peter Levoy said, we're going to have live live band and we're going to have a tanz has we know you always have this disco and this big dance over there but levoy peter is going to have a tanz has and he you were at that point invited Eletfa from new york that's our band to come and we played there that's a 10 years it seemingly took 10 years to really make a stamp and to and to say this is we're going to start a Tanz Haas movement here as a part of this festival. Can you talk a little bit more about that and maybe some of the challenges or, or pushback you might have received? Yeah, uh, yeah that was a very nice and uh, hard time <laughs> because after the, the first Calgary uh, uh, teaching, uh, 1989 or something like that, uh, they called me again back the Calgary dancers, Calgary white rose, white rose dancers, to teaching again them uh, more and more. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a very big uh, 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 There was opposition. Opposition with the Bartok dancers mm -hmm. who are also uh, in Calgary. Yeah. So uh, Calgary had, they, uh, they, uh, they had uh, two Hungarian folk dance ensemble, one is a Bartok and what is the Vadruja, and uh, I didn't understand why they are uh, make angry uh, to each other. Right. Why they are? Why didn't they do it together? Because no, I know yeah. they are Hungarians. <laughs> the Hungarian leaders <laughs> love to separate themselves, and uh, I am the best. No, you are the best. No, no, yes. I am the best. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yes. Uh, you spoke very enough about that. I know. Yeah. But. Uh, Slowly, I picked up the, uh, the information part uh, of the uh, Bartók dancers, and uh, I have to uh, tell his name, Sakony Bondi. Mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, one of the leader uh, in the early of the 90s mm -hmm. uh, of the Calgary Vodruz dancers, mm -hmm. and he tried to move closer to the Bartók dancers, and uh, in 19... 89 or maybe 90 when we were again in Calgary they uh, uh, he organized a dance dance has uh, event and he called all the Hungarian dancers not just Wadruza dancers and he called the the Bartok dancers also and uh, some of them they they come to uh, they came to the dance has and after the dance has we just start to discuss how can we thinking together how can we working together and the next five years that was when we were three times in calgary again to teaching but slowly to teaching not just the Hungary, uh, the Vodruza dancers but the Bartok dancers also mm -hmm. and before we go to the that uh, uh, famous festival where uh, Eletva played the uh, live music and uh, that was maybe in 
1985. No, 95, uh, 95. Uh, sorry, yeah. sorry, 1995. Yeah. So uh, I, before we uh, went to the Calgary, went to Calgary, the early summer we sent all the musics, all the chuyogotash, mm-hmm. all the part of the the their dances. Uh, to all the dancers and all the, all the groups, to Regina, to Winnipeg, to right. Calgary, to, uh, to all, all of these dancers. Yeah. And uh, when we were in Calgary, uh, we made a, a symposium. Mm-hmm. But not just we, but there were a, a very good uh, musician uh, couple. They were married couple, one woman and one man. I sorry, I remember, I can't remember their name, but uh, they were very good uh, musicians, and they were uh, English teachers also from Hungary. Mm-hmm. They just uh, uh, lived left in uh, Calgary, and we we made together a, a symposium. We teach the traditional dances, original Kalotasek dances, and we just put together all the informations what we will doing on the stage. It, you know, it was a more than thirty minutes long yeah. form. What we, uh, what they do, what they did with the live music. So we had to put together all this information and all this part of this dance. Uh, maybe that was, wasn't a dance; that was a wedding. Uh, yeah, the Kaltasegi, uh, Kaltasegi wedding. Yeah. Yeah, we tried to uh, show some uh, imp- important part of the Kaltasegi wedding uh, ceremony. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that was very good and very uh, new style of the uh, Western Canadian uh, Hungarian Folk Dance Festival is life. When, uh, uh, wh- it comes up frequently, uh, Peter, so I wanted to mention that. It comes up frequently in discussions uh, that I have as part of the podcast. Uh, Jim Cockle, actually, as well, musician. For him, it was like a very pivotal moment. Um, and, and others as well who are old enough to remember that festival. That was a big deal. So, um, and that was, yeah, I think it was 95. And, uh, and in Calgary, I remember the, the, the big wedding. And I also remember at the big, the old Hungarian uh, uh, club, you know, you walked in and on the left side, there was the disco and on the right side, there was the Tanz House. And, and now, of yeah. course, and I get the disco, I get the banquet, I get that, the importance of that. Um, but, uh, but at this point now, it's safe to say uh, that is a thing of the past. And now, obviously, every year uh, when the festival happens, it's, it's very Tanz House uh, focused, which is fantastic. Um, so... Going back to the old school uh, choreographies, where you know we're talking about um, when you joined the state ensemble, late seventies, early eighties, that was the transition time from the older style of of, of choreographies, the raboy kind of style, to uh, the Timar Shandor type of style, which is you know putting, trying as as as, as authentically as possible to put choreographies uh, that put the dances on stage in a choreography form. Um, there were, I presume at that time, and I've seen some YouTube videos which kind of crack me up because we have your generation and Juda and etc. you know, that you guys dancing uh, clearly, you know, when it's the Hungarian folk dance, it's the leggy and that kind of stuff. No doubt it's unbelievable. But then you have these, you're still doing Echeri Loko Dalmash and you're still doing yeah. the Pantlikazo style. Haramu Grosh, etc. So you have these older, more ballet trained dancers, right? Who are really not a part of the Tansas movement because they kind of predate that. What was that like living that moment for you? And was there friction, uh, opposition as we say, but friction may be a better word, um, as as we progressed from the old Rabai school more to the Timar school of dance? Uh, when I was a member of the Ballet Institute, uh, we just uh, learned uh, these different kind of uh, different style of dances also. So not just uh, uh, Tima Shandor style folk dances. So I think the stage is different. When you are on the stage and you have to, uh, you have to tell a fairy tale or something like that, from the stage, uh, it's a it's a different imagination to the audience, and uh, 
I, I wasn't any problem with the uh, rabbi uh, choreographies because I was very uh, uh, I don't know what Oh, yes, a fan, uh, like a fantasy almost, like it was very uh, uh, storytelling, a storytelling yeah, it, type of approach. It would like to tell something. Right. Uh, and when we do the, just the Tima style dances, that maybe we can call the original or traditional folk dances, we don't want to talk anything about just the dance. How high qualified can we dance the traditional dance? Mm -hmm. That was the main character when we do that style. And uh, of course, we were a professional dancer. That was our job to do that. So that was a difference between these two styles. How can we imagination and how can we uh, put on the stage? Do you think the stage gets in the way of truly experiencing traditional folk dance, which is best appreciated, not even in the context of a tansas? But going back to the wedding, in the context of its function, which is a party uh, or a celebration, like, like how do you how, how do you utilize the stage as a choreographer or as a professional dancer to really convey the essence of it? I think it's a great challenge. Uh, yeah, I think if you go on a stage, you have to be very clear about your body. What can you do and what you cannot to do? What is, this is the first. The second is you have enough imagination of that style, what you would like to show on a stage. If you have more information, more deeper information, what you would like to do, you can uh, uh, do it on the stage and you have to, maybe use me. Uh, uh, convince, me, convince. Convince the audience you are the master of this and you have to show them uh, and they have to believe you are the master of this mm -hmm. so I, uh, mm -hmm. that was my opinion these two do two styles of uh, dances and, and i would like to be a master always i would like to be a master not just a dancer that was my uh, lifestyle mm -hmm. to do a master right best of me Right. So back then, uh, you guys were already going to Tansazes and stuff, right? So the younger, I would say yeah. the younger, but then you have these, you know, older, <laughs> now for us, that's funny, but, you know, 30, <laughs> 30 plus veteran, you know, 30 year old plus veterans who, who entered the group in the 60s before the Tansaz was even invented or discovered, so to speak, uh, the Tansaz movement started. Um, were you like, when they were like, parties within the group um was there like a clear difference between the older people kind of sat there saying i'm not i don't know how to improvise a seiki or improvise a mezzo shigi in fact i've never heard of mezzo shigi really in that sense you know versus you guys who are out there improvising with the with the live band and the you know uh etc et, et what was there some of that going on i'm just very curious because you know you were there on the ground then uh i think uh I have another, another uh, impression. I was in 1918 when I was uh, first time in Transylvania for two weeks long uh, tournament with my friends, with Koko, Beshenyugabi, mm -hmm. and Lelo Vichita and, uh, and Jönvér, with the Hortobai Jönvér. Mm -hmm. So we were students, yeah. but we just uh, went to Transylvania like, just like a tourist. Yes. And uh, that, that two, two weeks long tournament we went to Gimesh and uh, Kolotoseg and Mezushig and Seik. We were three wedding party in Seik uh, between this two week long tournament. Okay. So that was completely a uh, big shock of us. How can we understand the folk dance, the really folk dance, uh, from the uh, folk people imaginations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or, uh, or uh, a they, point of view, their point of view? Yeah. That, yeah. That, the difference is, we are not a dancer, we are a cultural heritage uh, transporter. Yes. And this is completely change our mind, mm -hmm. our, our minds, because we are not just a dancer, we have to save something 
from there, from there, from these people to that people who are just the audience, who are just sitting in a theater, because we have to show that people also, not just ourselves. Mm -hmm. And th that was the, the moment when uh, we understand we have a, a bigger job, not just to be a dancer. When you discovered this, and your colleagues as well, including colleagues who were in the state ensemble at the time with you, when it came time to, you know, or, you know, Pantlikas or whatever, those type of old dances, were you like, oh, God, no, this is not what it's about, man? Like, were, were you were you almost, you know, disengaged from that old style and you, all you wanted to do is let's do all the new Timar kind of stuff? Even the new, even by the way, the new Timar stuff I know is really old Timar stuff now that's developed as well. But, but yeah. were you like, no, I don't want to do that old stuff anymore? No, uh, not not for me. Okay, not for me. I, I love to dance. I love to do that dances also because uh, you are an impressor. Uh, you are expressionist right. of the movement. Yes, and. Uh, this uh, little story is just like uh, or, mm -hmm. or whatever. These stories, these tales, uh, let us to uh, play on the stage. That was very different when we just make hardly the traditional folk dance. So we just uh, make waves. How can we do the traditional folk dances with very strong uh, energy and how can we play this little fairy tales on the stage? That was because we were a professional dancer. That was, that was uh, our profession. How can we do that? How mm -hmm. can we do two, three, four different parts of uh, uh, Elu Adu? Yeah, performance. Yeah, performance. Per performer. Yeah. So how can we do a, a really good performer, not just a dancer? Yes. So why we don't uh, angry when uh, old style choreographies were on the stage. So that wasn't a pro problem uh, for us. Yeah, and of course, now the younger, we're, we're from my, my generation, so I'd say people born, you know, late 60s, early 70s, Kodai, what, what ended up happening with Kodai, and you're the group Kodai in, in Hungary, not the Toronto Kodai, um, was groundbreaking um, because it was the first time we saw like really, really traditional dancing on stage um but in a mo very entertaining way in the highest form possible in terms of who the dancers were yourself included and then later i think the but the next generation has seen chardash tango of the east i mentioned that as a as a Zhurovsky performance choreography uh, chor uh, an entire show where i think the old style of storytelling combines with the with the traditional dance and and now we're starting to see more works like Fitosh Dejo as well you know the Magyar Falu you know they're trying they're starting to really combine those elements of storytelling which is very important for the audience always and traditional folk dance right and even some of your yeah. choreographies Kolota Segi Wedding the big challenge there in the in the in, in you know Calgary in the mid 90s was an example of that and some other work you did as well uh, obviously as a choreographer so that's an interesting way because I think storytelling is very important, but so is the the dance. Yeah, but uh, the different, the main difference, I think, uh, in the, the time of rabbis' uh, ages, uh, they didn't know uh, uh, very deep the folk dance tradition. They just collect the uh, dances on a film, sixteen millimeters films, but uh, no soundtrack. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know anything about how uh, strictly to the music, for example, the dances, or there are the uh, sumo uh, pieces and different pieces of the dance, how construct the dances. The rabbi don't care about that. They just would like to uh, find some uh, new movement possibilities and they just put it on in their choreography. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the main stream at that time. Yeah. But uh, when we do, or maybe Jura and Batu, uh, because they were the first of this, and uh, for example, the Kodai Chamber Ensemble, we not just do the uh, traditional dances, we uh, did more uh, 
deeper uh, thinking choreographies, uh, of course, from Jura and Batu, mm -hmm. because I, I, I'm not a choreographer. I just do put the dancers maybe on the stage and it, it can be look good, okay, but I'm not a choreographer. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to uh, call me myself to to be a choreographer okay. because I'm a dance teacher mostly. I'm not a choreographer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, of course, I have to do some choreographies, and uh, I got some prizes of uh, prizes, prizes, yeah, yeah prizes, awards, awards, awards yeah. yeah. But uh, mostly, I'm not a choreographer. But Jura and Botu, they were a choreographer because they thinking about different ways. What, what, what can we show with the folk dancers? So, uh, just like uh, Rabai and, uh, and other choreographers uh, did uh, in the middle of 50s or 60s, but these dancers did very well the traditional folk dancers. That was the main character. What, what, how can you understand the, the traditional dance and what can you uh speak with this right so this, that yeah. was the difference i think between the, the rabbi's style and uh, the new newest or newer real style right right and just uh, we can see the fitos de and so they just do very similar things mm -hmm. because they have uh, um, thinkings and they have a very good dancer they can do very good dances and they just put together all this information on stage. Right. In a very in a wildly entertaining form, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this yeah. is a stage. So we have yes. to do all the time newer and newer thinking and newer and newer forms. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to stop short of the contemporary uh, because I, that's not my style. I, I like the traditional uh, dances and, and uh, it's getting, you know, it is... Um, it's it's a challenge, I know, because there's only a limited vocabulary, so to speak, so uh, of the dance and music. But now the challenge is how to for the choreographer how to really you know do something new and groundbreaking. And a lot of it now is focused around the dancer, right? How good are these dancers? They're unbelievable, you know. I mean, they're all like you were in the '80s, you know. <laughs> so, by the way, I wanted to come back quickly to. To Pontozo. So after, you know, mid 80s, if your first time and fast forward to 2019 and, and when you come to the Pontozo again uh, after, after you know, years of, you know, you've been here uh, yeah, and, and taught. What impression have you had in terms of where the dancers and the dance movement for us here in North America has has developed and what are your impressions and what, what, what are you happy about, or maybe you like to see differently or improve a bit? Yeah, uh, it, it was very interesting to see the dancers now, the, or uh, past two, three years ago. I think uh, they are on a little bit wrong way mm -hmm. because the what? Oh. Just a minute. Yeah, yeah, that's your. You're doing an amazing what is, job. What, what are the tasks of the Hungarians in uh, uh, Toronto or Calgary or North America? Okay. The, to be Hungarian on another country is a very different thing just to be a Hungarian in Hungary. Because you are not just a, a national uh, somebody, but you have a different culture. You have a different cultures color in this uh, uh, land or this way mm -hmm. so th you have to not just dance you have to be a different somebody and if uh, that, that was the, my uh, biggest problem when i saw the dancers on the stage they just would like to be a very good dancer not just a culture uh, composer or something like that mm -hmm. because the the traditional culture is a very good connection between the people, not just the Hungarian people. So if you are uh, very hitalesh, uh, yeah, a faithful. Uh, if you are very authentic, authentic, uh, not just faithful, authentic uh, about your culture, you will be a very authentic people, not just a dancer. So 
I think uh, they have to change a little bit their mind, not just to be a good dancer, because the, to be a good dancer is uh, more than 50% just a technical question. But if you're authentic people, not just to dance, but in your culture, you can, uh, you can discuss more deeper between the other nationalities uh, and they will like, they will understand more deeper your uh, imagination <coughs> about your uh, expression. Mm -hmm. uh, did you understand? I do, you? but I, I understand, like, so I hear the words and what I'd like to now do is kind of understand what this means in practice. So, so explain a bit more how we might hear uh, in North America, let's say, but this might apply to Australia and South America. We have listeners yeah. from all over the place. What you think we should be doing differently concretely and why? Yeah, uh, we have a student uh, in an MA uh, degree. Uh, she's the last uh, uh, year student in the MA degree mm -hmm. in the Hungarian Dance uh, University. Uh, maybe you know her. Uh, uh, Broom Kajariak Alejandra Patricia. She's a member of the uh, uh, Tünderkert Ensemble in Montevideo. Yeah. So she's uh, she came from uh, North, uh, South America, yeah. from uh, Uruguay, Uruguay yeah. to be a, a student in the Hungarian uh, Dance University. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's uh, very, she she understands very well. What is the difference between that thing, what you mean before, and uh, what I mean? So how can you change, uh, complete your uh, uh, your, approach, your approach, your approach to to, to the cultural heritage? The people in North America or South America or Australia or whatever, uh, all over the world, they have to connect their uh, heritage. But the heritage is not just a picture. The heritage is uh, changing always with our life, with the, uh, our life, mm -hmm. uh, parallelly. So we have to understand, uh, we have to thinking, uh, we have to change our thinking also, uh, time to time, time after time, maybe also better. Thing. So not just the, uh, uh, make an isolated pieces what, what, what it means the traditional dance because the traditionality is changing always so if you are uh, authentic in your life and you are do your heritage dances you will be an authentic man in your whole life not just in your authentic dances on the stage yes but so let's say we're talking about a 12 year old uh, couple dance dancing in Kodai and and they have chosen to dance, you know, Sharkozy Ugrosh and Frisch. All right. Which is we saw a lot of that at the Punto Zoo. So and we see that. So they dance yeah. that. And, you know, it's nice. It's good. Maybe they're outstanding. Maybe they're as good as some of the kids you'll see in Solnok at the, or wherever Big Ishchaba, whatever festival. OK. Um, yeah. What, what's the what, what different do you what's different do you what difference do you want to see on stage from the Toronto kids versus the Big Ishchaba kids? Okay, the Big Ishchaba kids has a very big uh, chances to be an authentic signal uh, because they have a, a possibility to be a member of elementary or secondary art school, but you don't have a uh, to be a member in Toronto or whatever South or North America or mm -hmm. Australia. Mm -hmm. So this is a big difference uh, between in their life. Uh, eight or ten years to be a member of elementary or secondary art school, you can learn not just the dances, you can learn how to be a, an original people with your original traditional form. Not just the dance, but the music, the costumes, the uh, any other uh, or whatever, 
I don't know how you call it in English. Okay, I'm not. Uh, maybe uh, like function tools or so. Not uh, well. Anyway, yeah. So you're looking at your translator. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, folk handicrafts. Holy uh, crap! I didn't, okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you win. You Google Translator. I just Thank goodness. Google Translator. Very it smart. Okay, so if uh, yeah. you just, just, for example, if you play music with the flute or a tambour or whatever, you will understand more deeper what is your tradition. And uh, you are speaking in Hungarian all the day. You are dancing Hungarian, and not just Hungarian, but Slovakian, Romanian, uh, uh, Croatian, Serbian, because we are living together in the Carpathian Basin. So we have a very similar culture of forms. So you have to understand you are Hungarian, not just alone in the world. We are all together here in the Carpathian Basin. So our culture is very mixed with this, uh, the different nationalities. So we have to understand each other here. And if you are, uh, to try to be this uh, very open for open form of uh, civilization people in North America, in South America, in Australia, uh, whatever, all over the world, you will be a very authentic, more authentic than if you just a Hungarian. I think in North America, you have to be many kind of many forms to be open person, not just uh, close uh, your heritage close uh, in your heritage right. or in your dances uh, just back to your question what is the difference between uh, the Baker Shoba dancers 12 years dancers 12 mm -hmm. years dancers and, and the Toronto dancers they have a very big chance to invite to each other and discussing what it means to be a Hungarian in Baker Shoba and what it means to be a Hungarian in Toronto so then we have to put together themselves and uh, let them to discuss to each other. But when you're sitting on the jury, and so or you're giving feedback, yeah. which I know you did at the last festival here in uh, Pontozo, I, I, I would like to know, like visually, what are you missing, or what do you want to see uh, the Toronto kids do differently? Uh, not the most important, the technique. Okay. Not the technique is the dance. Mm -hmm. The dance is much deeper. Of course, they uh, always they're saying the dance comes from your heart. Your dance comes from, from your spirit. Not really. If you, uh, just for example, in a language, in a foreign language, if you learning some forms, uh, words and sentences from a different language, not your, your mother language, you have to uh, all the time learning and uh, training uh, the, the language forms, and uh, but you never be the original of that language because you just learn that. But if you're thinking about it, doesn't matter. You can uh, speak very well, but if you're thinking about in that language, you can to be uh, that kind of uh, man. It doesn't depend. I think it's not depend from the the language quality. It depends from the uh, thinking quality mm -hmm. to be another uh, man or not. So this is what I I I would like to tell the like a member of the jury to the to the dancers. Not don't want to be a Hungarian on the stage. Be a Canadian Hungarian on stage who can dance Hungarians also not just hungarians hungarian also and french and uh, maybe indian if uh, do you have a chance to learn indian dances or maybe polish or maybe uh, german because the dance is an international language without uh, words so you have to you have to understand how the other nationalities are thinking about this possibility just like a dance and you can show them what is your imagination of your dance. You can see that you you you're able to see by body movement and by the, uh, watching a two and a half minute dance that whether somebody is 
truly engaged with not just the Hungarian culture, but the surrounding culture of general Toronto area and Ontario and Canada, et, et cetera, uh, or whether they've decided even as a kid to just close themselves and just do Hungarian and try to be the next, you know, Peter Levoy or Fitos Deju, which they, they're not going to be able to do, right? So, so is that what you're able to see that based on the authenticity of body movement? Um, uh, as well, like I'm just very curious how you've, and I, I I can't disagree with you, but I also can't imagine myself kind of identifying this as an issue, just sitting back and watching a performance, a short performance. Not an easy question, thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's my that's the idea here. <laughs> this is why we're discussing. Yeah, yeah, but it's fascinating. Yeah, at least to me. <laughs> I'm not really sure about the answer. Mm -hmm. I just try to tell you my uh, my ears. Uh, my my feelings. Yeah. My my feelings. Yeah. So I'm not really clear about the, uh, this, but uh, I just try to find the, the correct words. How can I uh, translate to Hungarian to English? But if don't if I don't, I don't have. Uh, Hungarian words, uh, clear Hungarian words, what we have to understand about this, I can translate it to English also. Mm -hmm. Because in my mind, it's not really clear. Yes. But I just have, I have only uh, imaginations what we have to right. thinking about it. So it's not finished. Got it. Fast. Yeah. So this is kind of what we talked about with another one of your contemporaries, with whom you were in the uh, state ensemble, but he was a musician, the Seke Levente. During my interview with him, uh, he he was urging musicians to not be the next Ichan or Neti Shani or anyone else. Just be yourself. Be yourself. Yeah. And that authenticity is, I think, what you're talking about. So you're seeing potentially dancers here trying to emulate what they see on YouTube, not even the village dancers, but the people, the big Ishtaba guys doing the village dancing. And that's the wrong approach. Be yourself first, you know, and, and you see that, you know, unmistakable. Perhaps this is why, you know, solo no, as a violinist is, is successful um, because he is always solo no, and one may quibble that, you know, it doesn't sound exactly like Kodobo, you know, Bela Bachi's 1969, July 40s, or 30s, 30th recording, uh, whereas, you know, Konz Gerger might, but, but you know, this is Solono, and he's always going to be Solono. So that, I think that's kind of what you're, you're talking about in a, in a, in yeah. a, yeah, in a, in a way, right? Yeah. Almost exactly, almost exactly, because I don't want to be a, a, a very famous folk dancer like a, whatever from the Kaltasag region uh, or Mazushek region. I don't want to be a Fahir Yoni mm -hmm. from Erdogan Gershuzesh because I'm not a Fahir Yoni Bachi, I'm Levoy Peter. Mm -hmm. So I just looking around uh, the traditional dancers, original uh, dancers or village dancers, but I don't want to copy them. I would like to understand that. This is why we have to, we had to go there to them to to these people and discussing with them and understand what is in their mind, what is in their head, what, how can they understand how, what they are thinking about from their dances. But uh, I have to understand, and I had to understand also, I don't have to uh, follow their way, but I have to understand uh, what is their way. And I have to, I have to figure that my way in the dance and my way in the art and my way in the teaching system. Mm -hmm. Maybe that can be the authenticity and uh, be yourself. That, that yeah, can be that. we find this message. I think it's and I would urge our you know younger listeners um, as well to take from this because you're hearing this from. From folks who've been there, done that, and 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 a little older, like you know, you and Levent and stuff. I say older, you know, in quotes, but but uh, 
but um, that that's a very interesting message authenticity and that's kind of a, a key word for me as well um, I want to talk a bit with you about the teaching so obviously your primary task in the last uh, few decades has been um, education and not just education but teaching the teachers so what I, I, I wanted to uh, ask you about and you talk a lot about movement all the way back in 1984 walking into Calgary Vaudrojo hey guys I'm paid that I'm gonna teach you today first class how to move how to present yourself you know your and and, and that's so important I think because uh, it comes from ballet training my wife always talks about the importance of ballet training which she had as well um, maybe you can talk about the like how you see what the, the importance of body movement um, as well just universally and the role the like like how you want to change um, or the trends that you're looking to establish with respect to body movement and and you know what you want to, what you want teachers that you're teaching to impart on their students yeah. uh, <clears throat> that's very interesting and uh, very hard to understand how you can be a dancer what, what is the difference between the uh, normal uh, everyday movement and the dance movement so the the last 15 years my research was uh, uh, around this problem and uh, in my research, I, I found a very interesting thing uh, because I'm just not a teacher in the Hungarian Dance Academy or Dance University. I remember every year in the Sászolombotta International Folk Dance Festival, the 50, uh, uh, six, uh, sorry, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. Every year, I just a, a leader, a stage manager in this festival. And I saw a lot of kind of dances from everywhere of the world, from ocean, uh, ocean, uh, Pacific Oceans, uh, islands, till Serbians, Croatians, Germans, uh, Inuit uh, uh, dancers. So I, I saw many, many kind of uh, traditional dances or something like that. And I find a very interesting thing. All the people everywhere in the world just do four basic motifs. Hmm. And the dance is just that. Just stepping one side and closing. We call that childish step. Right step and close, left step and close. Maybe straight or back or whatever. Or maybe you can repeat it to one side. Maybe you just walk on the left or walk hmm. on the right. And sometimes you just stop it and start to go to an opposite way. This is a child dash step. Step and stand, step and stand. Mm -hmm. Another one is a very special uh, Carpathian basic movement possibility is a bocazo. When you open your legs and you when you close it together, knock on your heels with the nose, and uh, it's this very special Hungarian, or maybe in uh, Carpathian basic, not just for Hungarians. Romanians, and Slovakians, or, or Serbians, just doing a very similar forms. Uh, and the other one is a uh, titita, we call just the uh, cifra. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody do that titita, everywhere in the world. Everybody do. Titita, or ta titi, or titati, or suntititi, or whatever, just do that double time uh, shorter and one time longer rhythm form and uh, the th fourth form is uh, when you just two time on one leg and just jump on two time on the other leg it's just the basic of the langatu or hegezu or whatever mm -hmm. uh, what we call it in hungarian so these four basic movement possibilities or maybe short uh, motifs are uh, the basis of the dances not just the hungarian folk dances but because I'm Hungarian, I'm just calling these four uh, possibilities for Hungarian folk dances. So how can we understand, how can we uh, tell to the children these very less motives? It's right. It, these are very less. Few. But the few. variations. Yeah. They're few. Very few. Yeah. Okay, very few. Very few motives. But the variations are very high. Uh, yes, a high number. Yeah. Many. I remember. Uh, 
guess uh, how many Hungarian uh, understandable words we have because we have a Hungarian uh, language, 44 spells. Uh, uh, letters. Many, yeah. uh, letters, sorry, letters. Yeah. And uh, how many words we have understandable, understandable words? Understandable? Um, understandable. Yes. I'll guess uh, 360,000. <laughs> Good. Almost half million. Okay. So it's That's just think about 44 pieces. Yeah. Almost half million variation, understable, understandable yes. Yes. variation. Yeah. It's very, it's, it's huge. just a big boom. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Uh, it's huge. So, if we have only four basic movement, but the variations, the, it depends from the music beats, slower or faster, mm -hmm. or changing the, the motive forms uh, from each other, and uh, listen to the music sections, how can you put it to the music section, and whatever, whatever. So we have very, very much forms yes. to do to that. Yes. And I'm teaching that one. How can we... Uh, how can we imagine the children with very less motives, with the children's games or movement games, uh, how can we uh, open their eyes and uh, uh, growing their topogatu, uh, uh, Wrong, but, uh, oh yeah, their well, their imagination, but you know, but uh, their yeah. imagination yeah. Uh, around these possibilities, right? And this, this is the basic of the uh, improvisation, right? How can they understand the improvisation? What they would like to tell this for with these forms, mm -hmm. and because they are these are very less, but the, the variation possibilities are much more, right? So how can they use that? It depends from their mentality from their uh, uh, body forms uh, from their uh, past uh, experiences thinking, yeah. uh, progress, whatever but it, it they it is this is uh, their problems uh, it is not a right. problem no but no but there's it's their we're, challenge we're not, yeah their challenge yeah, yeah we're not similar so yeah. everybody is different with the others uh, so one, uh, one of them, can they do this one? One of them, can they do that one? So this is, but we have to understand each other. And we have only a few characters of the dances. We can much easy to understand each other. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the last 15 years research of me. Uh, and uh, and it, it, works. it Wh works. Why is it so... Why is it so groundbreaking? Or why is it important? And what... So you've been doing this for 15 years. What results have you seen from the actual students of the teachers that you're teaching to do to do to utilize this method? What's the outcome? Yeah, the children are completely changed uh, after the uh, 2000 because uh, the info communication system changed so completely. Right. Every children has two or three years old children has a smartphone or a tablet. They just sitting and caught playing something. Yeah. We can't play with a, a, a machine. We can play only with another man, mm -hmm. another human person. Yeah. Uh, the machine, you, uh, you cannot play because they just uh, put together this machine and, and uh, yes, program, programized yeah. Yeah. something. Program yes. some some program yeah. in the machine. So uh, this is a very worst world. Yate, yate, samito yate. Right, computer game. Yeah, computer game because the computer can't uh, play a game. Right, and you can't play with a computer. It just uh, it just uh, uh, marketing uh, right. something. Yes, it's just something. So uh, back back again to the children. So they just sitting. If they would like to dance with their machine, it's just programming something, and somebody's moving. It's just uh, pushing the uh, the buttons, and uh, the body is moving right and left and up and down mm -hmm. and higher and lower. Mm -hmm. But this is not a dance. 
The best is comes from inside and from your mind and from your body. If you can put together all the parts of the body, and if you have a, a very good uh, uh, feeling, feeling, you have a very good thing, and you have a very positive uh, remembers, mm -hmm. how can you imagine these forms, for example, from the plays, the body games plays, or the traditional uh, children's games, and you just put together these small pieces of the body Poss uh, movement possibilities we call uh, small motifs. If you put, uh, if you hide these uh, forms into the uh, children's games, they will do it. They will do it because uh, the, uh, their spirit are uh, playing, mm -hmm. not their body or their mind. But slowly they just uh, learning this movement possibility. And when you start to teaching the real dances, they just the movement possibilities just come from their mind and then from their spirit and they just know the dance so we don't have to teach the dance we have to play the dance i think this is a big difference right how, how do you do that though and stay true to the vocabulary of the various regions and villages that are, are required so you know in order to do a void of divine there is a oh there is an accepted method i think you're talking maybe about the, the maybe the answer is we're talking about younger kids you know as you grow older it's a different story you start learning the vocabulary of the various villages but but how do you how do you allow somebody or a child to get that freedom of expression and of body movement with these four basic you know uh, vocabulary steps but then of course also make sure the kid understands this is limited when we're talking Hungarian folk dance. You can't just do anything you want. So how do you how do you rectify those two forces? Okay, if you have uh, different subjects, for example, in our elementary school, uh, means uh, biology or mathematics or literature or history. Uh, if you uh, make an examination of these subjects, you speak always Hungarians. So you have to. Uh, make the examination in Hungarian language, but the thinking in their in your mind, you have to separate this uh, different subjects from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I, I can only uh, say in Hungarians uh, what it means uh, in the physics. A tömeg. A tömeg is uh, just a mérték egység or something like that in a, a physical physics subject. You understand what I mean? Yeah, I don't know the a, a, a translation, but uh, maybe uh, you could look it up on your Google. You cannot anyway. translate it. In yeah, but it's a it's, it's a mathematics or physics principle, right? Yeah, and, and, a principle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if you are uh, in a, a historical uh, subject, mm -hmm. the tömeg means, uh, but the, Crowd. the word is the very same, yes. but it's very completely different. Yes. Tömeg is a lot of people in one place, one piece. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is what we have to understand what we are using in the dance, in different dances, we can think in a different uh, forms. How can we put together this uh, different difference in our mind? What it means in this dance, what it means in that dance. Mm -hmm. And how long is uh, to understand, to make understandable to the children these differences? Years and years and maybe 10 or 15 years they have to be an adult till they will understand the differences between this stomach and that stomach. Mm -hmm. Right. The dance is just work very similarly. Mm -hmm. We just have to teach the dancers, but we don't have to uh, ask, do you understand what I mean? No, no. Just let them to do. Yeah. And when they will be adult, they will be the understand and the differences between the dances because it's a very long term to uh, understand this. Yes. One. Well, it takes a lifetime. It it, yeah, it yeah. takes a lifetime it's a and yeah, you know, it's a culture. <laughs> right, and, and and of course the village the village dancers only dance only quote unquote dance the the dance of that village. So you know, I always say as a tansas musician, I would love to. If someone says, "Hey, Uchi, play uh, play Gimeshi." And I, I, yeah. I wish I can say, I'm really not good at it because it's true. Like, I really don't focus on it or listen to it much. 
uh, and they're like, well, you have to, okay, you know, so then I do. And, and, you know, we, we, or you now as a professional dancer, we can't really turn down <laughs> the opportunities to do all the villages. And that's what we're kind of doing. Um, and so I understand it's a natural progress. And we start with these baby, literally babies, four steps. Um, and, and that what everything uh, grows out of. The, the, the method, the Ich Kaliadni, which uh, the United Nations, uh, the UNESCO uh, organization recently granted you an award for, is, is that an offshoot of that or what is that uh, exactly? Ich Kaliadni, which means walk this way, walk this way, talk this way. Is it walk like an Egyptian, like walk like in a Hungarian? No, what, is, what, is, what is the Ich Kaliadni? Okay, Ich Kaliadni is uh, one of the famous of Hungarian uh, uh, traditional dance song. Ich Kaliadni, Ich Kaliadni, Shari Kati yes. Tudja, okay. Ich Kaliadni. Yeah. It means Shari and Kati, these are Hungarian names. Yeah. Sara and Kate yes. uh, know, they know how they can dance. If uh, 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 Sarah and Kate can know, everybody can do the dance. Because Sarah and Kate, just two names. But uh, you can put your name uh, also uh, for uh, right. change. You can change the, the names in these words mm -hmm. so, or in the sentence. So how can you do the dance? Because everybody can do the dance. If uh, <clears throat> you don't want to do a dance, if you don't, if you just want to play the dance, you can do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it, you cannot do it. Mm. You understand me? Not quite sure. So say that again. Okay. Yeah. Once again, if you would like to do the dance, yes, you don't have to do the dance, but you have to play the dance. Right. Because if you would like to do the dance, you cannot to do the dance. <laughs> Did you practice this in English? <laughs> I get it. So it's about. No. Is it about playfulness? Is it about playfulness rather than rather than doing it? So, because what I, I the sense I get that a lot of your work in the last few decades has been around creation and playfulness rather than mimicking or copying or or doing or performing something because that is a wild ass challenge that nobody wants. So is that is that what you're saying? That's the that's the idea. Yeah. It's very close, very close. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you've been a great sport talking in English all this time. I know it's uh, you don't. It's not something you use all the time. Your English is fantastic, by the way. Still, after all these years, I wanted to ask you one, a few more things about about um, back in the '90s. Uh, you were very generous with me uh, personally, and I was a, I guess, teenager slash you know into into my twenties, and you uh, uh, took me and a few other uh, friends. Uh, to Transylvania one summer, and uh, and you took us to Magyar Lona, which is in Kalotaseg, and and you took us to a bootmaker. I think his name was Feri Bachi, right? Feri Bachi, Saku Ferenc. Saku Ferenc. And, and there was also a shepherd there, Yoni Yoni Bachi, who played yeah. the furuya, and it's the first and I one of the only shepherds I've I've really met. Why did you take us there? There's a whole world out there in Transylvania. What was what was your connection uh, to 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 Lona, um, and and that special bootmaker who lived in a really small house and 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 Yoni who, who lived literally up in the hills? What what was your what was the idea back then for you and and, and that what you wanted to show me and show us? Yeah, because they were very original people. I was what well, what I mean. The Feribachi, Saku Feribachi. Uh, can't dance because they don't know the dances. Uh, of course, when uh, he was in the mulat shag or or wedding party, yeah, like yeah. yeah, in the parties, mm -hmm. they just took a girl, uh, or took a woman, took her wife, and just do some very similar dance. Right. But who cares? <laughs> the time is to dance, and nobody understands and nobody cares about uh, how. Uh, nice is their dances because the time is to dance and everybody can do their dance from their mentality mm -hmm. he was a very good and very nice bookmaker so he want to do the dance very nice but he want to do he want to do the boots are very nice right but 
uh, in the village people's mind, they would like to do something very nice. Somebody can do the Kosa Alash very nice. Somebody, some of them can do very nice zhup on the uh, uh, roof, or some of them can do very nice sewing, or some of them can do very nice boot making, and some of them can do very nice dancing. Right. And in the village, everybody knows in in this uh, region or in this uh, village people what different uh, uh Yeah, means. like what different um, crafts or arts. Yeah, everybody can do. But, but the, the, like what um, what? Jeez, uh, I'm zoning out. Too. Mastery, mastery, maybe mastery. Yeah. What are uh, in mastery? So what? What is that? if you would like to? Uh, ask uh, somebody, okay, who is the leg of Kossash in the village? Yeah. What the, Everybody knows yeah. that. Right. Who is the leg of, uh, who is the best uh, roof maker? Yeah. Everybody knows that. And if you would like to a very safe and very good roof on your ha of, of your house, you have to ask him, mm -hmm. okay, please come to make my roof, make my house, uh, because you are the best in, the, in this village. Mm -hmm. And they just know who's the best dancer. If you would like to ask the best dancer, everybody knows in the uh, everybody knows in the village who are the best dancer. So in their mind, that was a very different. Yoni Bachi was a very uh, original man, and Feri Bachi was a very original man. And this is why I uh, took you to them because you can discuss with them and you can. Uh, they will. They just opened your eyes. Not the dance is just an important, but the life is an important. Mm. How can you live your life if you live a whole life, an open life? You can your you can be your life master yeah. without that in the, in the wing. So not the dance yeah. is important. The life is important. Right. Authenticity, authenticity, Authentic and yes. being yourself. This goes yeah. back to the very first thing we talked about uh, as a as a dancer for yourself uh, coming out of the academy, joining the state ensemble, and also uh, the, the very last thing we're closing on, um, folks. And Peter, thank you. I mean, it's always a philosophical discussion with you. I don't think we've ever talked about uh, sports or or uh, the, the weather, you know, or or baking muffins. We always go quite deep when we whenever we speak, and I really appreciate. The time that 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 and your, all your all your um, your thoughts and your input. So um, I think we're gonna shut it down now. Um, and um, and thank you, Peter, so much for for joining me today. I, I thank you to also all the listeners. Yes. And thank you. Thank, thank you. For you. And on behalf of uh, Peter Levoy and myself, Kama Magyarucci, thank you so much for listening. And we will see you next time.